forgotten on his birthday. At this moment, children are expecting presents. Youth imagine themselves in their brand new clothes and reflect on how to exploit the general indulgence that surrounds the up and coming events. Parents make plans and dip into their savings. Homes have their Christmas tree set in place. Presents are piling underneath, cards are exchanged, secret Santa games are played, turkey and stuffing will be on the menu for that day. Shops are overwhelmed with orders of this and that game. The large-scale buying and skillful wrapping gives the season away. There is no doubt about it. Christmas is on the way. It's time to celebrate. And we're now on the eve of Christmas. The day has come and gone. The excitement of the gifts are already wearing off. Children already hoping for what they will receive next Christmas. Parents are calculating how much of a budget was spent. This year's pandemic gave many a get out of church free card. Those who usually grace the church halls at least once a year will now have a two year absence on their record. It's not my fault, they say. I would normally have gone to church to receive my good conscience for the new year. But where is the saviour in all these festivities? How do men celebrate a party in total disrespect for the values for which the host was born, lived and died to uphold? And did you say they were celebrating the birth of a saviour? A saviour from what, one is tempted to ask. What have they been saved from? What these good people have been saved from is difficult to tell. However, it is evident that they have been saved into hedonism, the belief that pleasure is the chief good. On seeing the way mankind, pagans, agonistics, atheists, communists and Buddhists alike, as if they all just got converted and abandoned their hatred and contempt for Christ, decides to engage in celebrating and for this plunges into every wicked deed you can imagine. One would think they were celebrating deliverance from all else except the sins for which Christ died. We may just be celebrating someone else's birthday, Epicurus maybe, but not Christ's, definitely not. Self-deception of this scale and kind stuns the mind and renders language dumb. It is disturbing and regrettable that Adam's race decides to satisfy its most carnal and brutish desires on the day it is believed Christ was born. Nothing is said of his central themes, the priority of the soul and the spirit. Rather, far from being Christians, these are hardened intruders since no one invited them to any party, let alone the birthday of the Saviour whose salvation they reject. But who is this man who is forgotten on his birthday? Who is this saviour whose salvation's rejected? About 2,000 years ago, in the city of Bethlehem, a baby boy was actually born to Mary and Joseph, a young Jewish couple. They named him Jesus, meaning, he shall save his people from their sins. He was also called the Messiah or the Christ, being the one anointed for a special mission. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, John chapter 4 verse 25. He did not remain the baby Jesus, the Christmas carol sing about, for he grew up to be the man who by his words and deeds has most significantly influenced the welfare and history of mankind. You only need to read the Gospels to agree with me that by his life, death and resurrection, no man ever performed as many miracles as Jesus did. But if he was indeed born, it was for the sole purpose of dying for the sake of Adam's fallen race. Consequently, at age 33, he was nailed to a rugged cross where he bled and died. He died for you and me so that believing in him and by believing in him, we may be saved from the just penalty for sin that we were bound to receive from God. 
but simply because he loved you. He came preaching repentance, healing the sick and setting captives free from their bondage. So in Jesus Christ, the son of God took human form and came down to earth just to deliver and save you. He declared he did not come for those who are good and who therefore have no need of him, but for those who admit their guilt of sin and desperate need for his help. Luke chapter 5 verse 31. Is that not good news? In these days of bad news, in nearly every domain, these are the good tidings that Christmas bells are chiming, echoing the words of Jesus saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, victims of emotional and professional disappointments, to proclaim liberty to the captives, slaves to alcohol, drugs, sex and all kinds, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Luke chapter 4, 18 to 19 and Isaiah 61 verse 1 and 2. That is the good news of Christmas. If you have never heard good news before, then you have just heard it. But you can only benefit from the gift and blessing of the liberation and salvation Jesus so dearly bought for you. If you forsake your sins and ask him to be your Lord and saviour provided you are sincere you can do this by repeating this simple prayer lord jesus i am a wretched lost sinner who has sinned in thought word and deed forgive me all my sins and cleanse me receive me saviour and transform me into a child of God. Come into my heart now and give me eternal life right now. I will follow you at all cost, trusting your Holy Spirit to give me all the power that I need. Amen. If you have prayed the above prayer earnestly, then you are forgiven and are now a child of God. First John chapter 1 verse 9 and John chapter 1 verse 12. Henceforth, you will think of Jesus not just once a year at Christmas, but every day living a life that is pleasing to him. Only then will Christmas take on its true importance. Only then will Christmas have meaning for you.